everybody. Welcome to uh, uh, coaches meeting for whether or not. Thank you very much for taking the time actually and coaching your kids for this year's uh, Science Olympiad. Uh, I guess we'll have to see how things go over the next couple of weeks uh, between district and and uh, and county. So, all right. Um, I know it's been a little bit. So actually, there's probably a number of you that may not have actually done this before, or maybe have done it with other kids because we've kind of had a uh, uh, and a uh, very limited amount over the last two years. All right, um, my name is Ray Bozinski. Uh, I've been uh, doing this now either six or, this is either seventh or eighth year that I've been actually doing uh, whether or not um, I was a coach for this event back in the mid, uh, in the mid uh, 2000s with my son uh, and always had a great love for weather. So uh, I'm taking the opportunity here I um, don't know some of you guys up on that one. I'm uh, actually myself, my, uh, my, my real job is actually as a physician in, in the area. So um, the weather's always been a passion. So um, we'll go over what uh, to expect uh, for the testing days uh, for your children um, and to try to help to prepare. Unfortunately, due to my associate having Corona over this week, I wasn't able to put together a, uh, uh, PowerPoint like I wanted to. So my plan is actually to put something together in the next week or two and give it to the powers that be. So it should be on the website uh, within the next couple of weeks. So if you can check, but we'll go over most of the material today. Okay, so um, we've got the, uh, uh, I think up on uh, your guys' screens, uh, we have uh, what the rules are, uh, pretty straightforward. Again, it's uh, team size one to two, although I think they have had it actually as many as three in the past, depending on what goes on. Uh, so I'm not too sure if there is a little bit of variability. Um, what ends up happening in the room, and again, we, we get variable for what our room size is, that again, the kids are at a uh, at a desk or at a table, uh, and being combined, we offer some separation between, uh, again, what we're gonna have to do here over the next, uh, you know, over the next, next couple of months, I, I think we'll be in a state of flux. Um, the kids can talk to each other, uh, but again, we want to try to keep it down to, as my mother would say, a dull roar. Um, I will actually, uh, you know, uh, give a little bit of uh, uh, of warning for the kids that they're getting a little bit, uh, get a, bit, a little bit loud. Of course, we're going to encourage them to stay in their seats so we're not distracting. Um, all they're going to need is uh, their number two pencils. We will have some there, of course, to be able to... Uh, uh, use if uh, they forget and a one five by eight index card per team not per student and that can be filled on both sides that can have anything you doggone well want on it um, but again only one five by eight no devices whatsoever um, unfortunately there was a couple of times over these times where people items were coming out and the question on cheating and uh, even though again uh, it probably won't I, I, I'm going to strongly uh, ask people not to have their kids phones, tablets, any kind of device. Um, uh, I don't know whether or not some of our kids uh, would be diabetics. Again, I have a child that is a type one diabetic, but again, my encouragement is, again, I know we have uh, now the way that most of our pumps are set up that they have warnings. Again, I'm just asking the parent to stay outside or, or coach to stay outside the door during that 30 minute period and we can address. Uh, I don't want any questions. And unfortunately, if I see them, I'm gonna have to actually uh, dismiss them uh, from the room. So um, uh, so that's uh, that's it on that one. Uh, but again, like I said, they are able to talk with one another. Um, what the test is actually is a two part. Uh, the first part will be eight, I mean, excuse me, 10 images that will be um, presented on a screen in the front of the room. Uh, again, I, I don't know what kind of room we're gonna have in terms of lighting and everything else. Generally, we do have to bring down the lighting. Um, uh, it's the first uh, 20 questions of the test. Uh, there will be two questions per uh, per image, and, and uh, that can range uh, from uh, cloud uh, to storm types uh, to weather instruments uh, to weather maps, um, and they'll have 30 seconds per image on the screen. Um, and then uh, after I go through it the first time, I will go back and show each photograph for another 10 seconds. So the first part of the test will be about seven minutes long. Now, it's uh, 
advantageous. And again, we get a little bit of a practice if we are going to be doing our uh, district uh, that that the kids need to be in. They need to be aware what the rules are so we don't have to keep going it, not answering a lot of questions because the longer they take to settle down, the shorter amount of time that we have, because especially at the county level, you really only have that 30 minute period. Um, so try to encourage them, make sure they're aware of what the rules are and to try to encourage them to stay put. Then after that is, uh, if we necessary, we'll throw up all the lights and then there should be about another 50 questions or so. So a total of 70 questions to answer in that 30 minutes. The questions are gonna be straightforward. Uh, they're worth either one, two or three points and that's the determined by myself. Um, they're gonna be either two answer, three answer, or four answer choices. Um, there will be only one right answer. Uh, there's not, I try to make sure I'm wording the questions appropriately so we can say, but there's always that exception. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be saying usually, almost always, whatever, not, never giving definitives always uh, or, or not. So, um, and they will be straightforward. Uh, now we're gonna have to realize that we range this anywhere from third grade to sixth grade participants. So depending on how the, the main coaches from your schools are doing it, you know what, I, I, we only write one test per the district uh, and then one for the county. Um, I do my best to try to keep the words uh, straightforward. I actually have a couple of teachers from elementary schools read it. Uh, to make sure, again, the verbiage is appropriate, uh, but probably not a good idea to have two third graders, you know, being able to do it. They're just not going to be able to perform well compared to um, the fifth graders or sixth graders. And since there's that separation between three to five, uh, three to fifth grade, uh, third to fifth grade, excuse me, and fourth through sixth, depending on what district we're in. So um, uh, just to kind of keep that in mind, um, they are able to write on the question booklet. However, everything needs to be on the zip grade sheet. So again, if you've never experienced that, it's basically like the old Scantron for those of us of a certain age uh, in college uh, to be able to fill out um, the B, A, B, and C. So to make sure that the kids are aware of how to be able to do it and to make sure that they're actually are filling it out completely. They could have all the correct answers on the test booklet, but if it doesn't translate to the zip grade, that's the only thing that's looked at. Uh, the book, test booklets will not be able to leave the, uh, uh, the uh, building. Uh, again, I, I add new questions along, but again, uh, there's a certain limited number of questions that I could be able to do and we kind of rotate things over a three, four or five year period. So again, those cannot leave. Um, and then uh, go ahead, the kids can leave early if they are done, uh, if they wish to. Again, try to be quiet, we'll have things turn in, but once they leave the room, they're done. Same thing's true actually, again, uh, make sure they're going to the restroom before. Again, I, I can't let kids out and then come back in. Again, we wanna make sure that we keep this as uh, fair as we can. It is only a 30 minute test. Uh, so hopefully again, make sure that they have a, you know, that they go to the bathroom before. I know there's a few of these kids that you're racing across campus uh, in the county because you're back to back. Again, I've done that myself. Um, so, uh, but try to encourage the kids to make sure that they're using the restroom before uh, coming into the room. Um, let's see what else uh, from a questioning standpoint. Is there any questions actually from uh, from what I presented so far? Pretty straightforward. OK, all right. I have a question. Sure. Sorry, uh, in sure. regards to the uh, uh, the three by five or the five by eight card, does it have to be handwritten? Does it, nope. can it be, nope. be okay. anything you doggone well want? OK, but it's only a five by eight card. Am I going to have a am I going to have a rule or if you're getting away with a five by eight and a half? No, but I'll be able to tell if something's way out of line. Uh, but nope, can be anything you want and can be on both sides. So if you, you know, if you, if you computer generated it, handwriting it again, what this is just to add some help for the kids is to kind of key on, um, uh, you know, so they can actually look if they're they're not 100 percent sure. Uh, again, there's a limited amount of time to be able to, you know, to access. So again, um, it's going to be maybe concepts that the kids have more difficulties with. 
um, or again, believe that will be a, a, a greater amount. Uh, as you see with the competitions this uh, year's, uh, the concentration will be on severe weather, which means about 25 to 33 percent of the questions will be dealing with severe weather. So we're talking about uh, thunderstorms, tornadoes, hurricanes, um, blizzards, nor'easters. So those kind of more severe weather phenomena. Now it won't be all of them, and again, up to one third. So again, uh, not all. So again, depending on which uh, your kids are going to be looking at. That's what we're going to be. Uh, as I said, uh, they'll be straightforward. Uh, there'll be some true and false. Again, there will be an absolute right answer. Um, and, and the rest are multiple choice. Um, so for instance, uh, and again, I'll provide it uh, extra up on that one. One question may be, uh, you know, all, uh, all the following are uh, types of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere except um, and choices could be uh, carbon dioxide, argon, uh, methane, and water vapor. Okay, so again, which answer, you know, again, they would put in there. In that case, it would be B. So, uh, and, uh, you know, being able to provide uh, that answer. And that's how the questions will be. On the photographs, I may provide you a picture of a cloud. And in that case, I may, what type of cloud it is, it could be, again, giving choices. Uh, again, try to provide the most clear example that I can for those uh, uh, type. Uh, what, uh, how uh, tall it may be? Is it a mid-level, low-level, high-level cloud? What kind of precipitation? Maybe what kind of weather are usually you know are usually associated? So those are the kind of things that you would be, uh, you know, that uh, question types that would be able to have. Um, you know, again, I would provide the list of items uh, that should be there. Actually, if you go back to old. Uh, levels if it's still available. Uh, again, it's there. Um, again, we're going to look at the atmosphere, the layers, um, the features, kind of characteristics, contents of it. Um, you know, again, greenhouse gases, uh, air masses, the types of air masses, uh, you know, where they do, you know, ar ar arrive from, uh, what kind of effects they may have on weather, uh, fronts, uh, again, the, the four primaries, the cold, the warm, the stationary, the occluded. Uh, the characteristics of, uh, of those types of fronts, what kind of weather associated before, during, or after the front passes. Uh, be able to identify it on a weather map, um, you know, uh, again, uh, based on, on the type uh, where you don't have to actually understand uh, uh, the weather barb, you know, being able to, to say, okay, how fast winds are going and being able to identify what a pressure may be. But if I put something like isobars on it and a, a series of them, you know, what kind of weather may be associated uh, with that or what is it a high or is it a low? So, um, you know, those kind of things to be aware of, but we're not going to get into for, you know, any more stringent forecasting other than what kind of weather that might be associated. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, pressure and weather, the characteristics, uh, the changes of pressure throughout the atmosphere, its effect on wind. And again, like I said, isobars and weather maps, uh, humidity, you know, things about water vapor content, dew point, relative humidity, uh, and heat index, um, you know, instruments. And uh, these are the only ones that we're going to do. Again, I'm not going to go too crazy up on that one. Uh, it, Doppler radar, a raisin, uh, radio son, um, a barometer, altimeter, anemometer, thermometer, psychrometer, weather vane, rain gauge, wind sock, hygrometer, different types of satellites, what their functions are and to be able to identify them if actually a photograph is actually given. Uh, know about the seasons uh, and equinoxes and solstices, uh, be able to you know, uh, understand the description of them, why they occur, and association with the Earth orbit. Uh, again, the water cycle. Uh, again, most of the kids probably start that about a, a third grade and almost get it every year. Um, you know, again, knowing some you know uh, ideas about uh, evaporation and so forth. Uh, wind is always a good one. How is it created? Um, you know, factors that affect it. Uh, association with high and low pressures. Um, you know, the three um, uh, cell model for global winds. Uh, and you'll see that actually if you look in the books. Um, you know, how they affect the weather. The Coriolis effect. Um, uh, jet stream, you know, kind of location, uh, what kind of effect it has, uh, know about sea breezes and land breezes, uh, know about the, the Beaufort scale of, that used to be used for description of winds. Again, we're not going to give you a description and tell you, okay, what, uh, uh, you know, what uh, you know, scale are you at? Um, 
uh, also understand about El Nino and, El, and La Nina. Uh, again, general things, we're not getting into um, uh, you know, graduate level you know, weather, your meteorology. Uh, precipitation, know about rain and snow and sleet, freezing rain and hail, and how the atmosphere's conditions may create those. Uh, especially things like differences with freezing rain um, and hail and sleet. Um, you know, thunderstorms, uh, stages of development, uh, types of thunderstorms, you know, characteristics and severity, squall lines, lightning, lightning safety, risk to safety, uh, tornadoes, how, you know, form, uh, conditions uh, for creation, uh, characteristics, wall clouds and shelf, self clouds, uh, funnel clouds, uh, Doppler radar characteristics. Now, I think almost all of us listen to weather and everything else. We've got a little bit more understanding on that. Um, understand about the enhanced Vegeta scale. Um, and again, I'm not going to give you characteristics and say what, uh, you know, what kind of ranking, uh, you know, would this be given, uh, but understand, uh, you know, what it, me what it means, uh, how many tornadoes may be, uh, what kind of uh, tornadoes are more frequent. Uh, based up on the scale, um, you know, uh, again, our uh, EF zeros and ones more uh, prominent or EF fours and fives, um, things of that nature. Again, kind of Dixie Alley and uh, Tornado Alley uh, and water spots. Hurricanes, again, formation, characteristics, conditions to create, um, progressions of storm intensities, again, the types the, between a disturbance, no difference between a disturbance, a depression, a tropical storm and a hurricane, you know about the Safford Simpson scale um, uh, and the kind of weather that's associated with hurricanes. Um, you know, and some of the dangers, blizzards, again, definition, characteristics, wind chill, probable locations, more common locations. Uh, since we live in Michigan, always good to actually know about lake effect snow uh, and doing that one. It's a, it's a nice topic to be able to learn about. Uh, nor'easters, as I said. Some optical phenomenon, uh, crepuscular rays and rainbows. Um, uh, I'm a big fan of actually, uh, again, this is an educational tool for our kids. And I would love them to understand what warnings and watches are and the differences. Unfortunately, the majority of the adults in the United States have no clue uh, about what these are. So I want these kids to be weather savvy up in that regards. So being able to go, if you go to the uh, National Weather Service sites again, what the descriptions of these are um, and making sure. Um, again, safety issues as well. Uh, again, uh, some of the National Weather Service's, uh, you know, uh, safety recommendations regarding around, uh, you know, tornadoes, flash floods, um, uh, thunderstorms, you know, hear the roar, you know, go indoors, you know, uh, things of that nature. So the kids understand what, uh, you know, what they mean when they hear these things. Uh, and actually weather and climate, the definitions, the uh, difference between weather and climate, being able to recognize the difference. Um, and sometimes actually, again, some of our geographical um, items here, especially in the United States that actually, um, you know, affect these uh, and how they affect it. Uh, we're talking only about the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, so uh, again, uh, we're not gonna be uh, going back, okay, things being different in the South and, and, and whatnot. Uh, again, we're gonna call hurricanes. We're not gonna go a difference, you know, uh, where the area of a typhoon or a cyclone is going to be, uh, there was, those storm names change as you move to uh, different locations uh, around the globe. So again, we're just going to be talking about that. Um, and that's the kind of material that we're talking about. Uh, there should be, I don't know actually, can they get, I don't know actually if the main body is here, uh, if it's still available on the um, on the site from last year, I, I usually do uh, give a, a list of possible books to be able to utilize and websites that you can go to help uh, to prepare so you can help educate your kids. Hopefully that should be there. I'll get, I'll get make sure they have another copy of it. Uh, and again, will be available on the site for you guys to be able to utilize. Um, again, this is my always uh, feeling with regards and even with my kids, because uh, three out of my four children participated here with Science Olympiad. It was a wonderful experience and I'm glad you guys are, are taking the opportunity to, to help your kids. It's a extended learning experience for these kids. Um, it's great to win or lose. It's great to win. Again, it's not about the winning or the losing, although it is wonderful. These guys are actually treated like rock stars. Uh, you know, during the uh, award ceremony, it's uh, it's quite quite an experience. But again, what we hope is these kids actually learn a little bit more 
um, and uh, go above and beyond what, again, um, they're, they're, they're getting up in school. Um, so those are the topics that will be going on. As I said, the points are one, two, and three. So how the scoring is going to end up going, it should be somewhere between 135 to 150 total points, depending on, on what I feel is, again, the, the type of questions and points. Um, the uh, If there happens to be a tiebreaker, and that's always one of those issues to, to be working with, the first tiebreaker is actually going to be um, which team gets the most num uh, three-point questions correct um, and going on from there. Um, and again, it's a nice uh, objective way of being able to break the tie. Um, if they're not, there will be a short question uh, that's going to be as the second tiebreaker. And we'll, that will only be go to if we do not break the tie with the three point question number. Um, I, again, it, it will be short answer. Uh, it could be as many as just two words, depending on that one. Uh, again, it's a little bit more subjective than I'm, uh, uh, that I'm going to have to determine how close sometimes uh, to it. They may be exactly right. I may have to pick the one that actually is the absolute closest uh, there. Spelling does not matter if as long as I can actually get the gist of what they're talking about. I'm not making spelling, you know, a, uh, you know, a, a critique here. Um, so I know some, you know, some do. I think an A is for anatomy is really a stickler. Uh, but uh, in this case, as long as I can, as long as I can figure it out, uh, I'll, I'll go with it. Uh, so uh, we started doing this a couple years ago, and I don't know if we've ever. I think we only had to go once. And to tell you the truth, I encourage my, my the kids that again to at least give the you know, answer. There will be a spot at the bottom of the zip grade for it. Uh, there was once actually, again, it, it, the tie broken because somebody wrote something. It was not even close probably to answer, but since they're the only ones who attempted to answer the question, they're the ones who won the tiebreaker. So, but it's only happened once, I think, in the last couple of years. So I, I think it worked out well. We did a couple of things prior, uh, but uh, I think this works out. Uh, it works out the best. So uh, I think uh, that covers about what this is going to be like. I, I don't know how many kids uh, will be. Uh, it sounded like from uh, Mr. Ogden that we're going to probably be somewhere in the middle of what we would have pre-COVID, but more teams than existed last year. Uh, I think it was just a little over half of the teams participated last year, and I think the numbers run around two thirds. So um, it, it, again, usually it's somewhere between about 12 to 17 teams per classroom. Uh, I know when, and when I've done it, it's been about, uh, you know, I've run about five sessions. So again, we could have potentially 34, 36 kids, you know, in the classroom. So it, it is pretty important to make sure that they kind of keep things quiet. Um, and again, but they are able to talk to each other. That's okay. Um, uh, that, that I'm not going to be picky. I'm not going to throw them out unless they're really being you know, very obnoxious to the surrounding teams, but I, I may have to give them a couple of, uh, you know, heads ups. All right. Any other questions that anybody has based on what I presented? I have a question. Uh -huh. um, as far as the um, participation, the testing in that, yeah. just for clarification, does each child of the team complete their own test or is no. it a team effort a, and one per team to be completed? Good question. It's one per team. It is one per team. So the kids need to work together and to be able to uh, you know, complete it again on the zip grade. Now, um, usually, uh, unless uh, Mr. Ogden will change it, we've actually had the, we've had the, the, booklet separate for the questions for images and then the remainder of the test. So again, again, how your kids will work best together. Sometimes those kids may have completed those answers and then putting them on it where the other kid will work on the test booklet. Um, you know, again, there's variations that you could be able to do. The point is making sure though you fill out the zip grade correctly. Um, uh, so and making sure you're filling in the, the souls, but it's actually one test per team. 
generally uh, the kids don't have to worry about, uh, at least at the county level, I'm not too sure about the district. Um, what uh, Mr. Ogden has done is actually the zip grades are already pre um, labeled with their school and code number on it. So the kids won't have to worry about writing that down or knowing what specifically uh, their school code is. Uh, that should be done. OK, that's a good question. Anything else? Any good resources that we can uh, again uh, that, that sheet hopefully should be if not, I'll, I'll text to one of the old ones. Actually, I have one other that might be available. I'm going to have to take a good look at it, but I'll make sure I put them up there um, again. They might still be available from last year's. Uh, and again, I, I, I again, I don't. There, there may be one book that I add, but if you want to get a start, it, it's going to be there. Uh, and uh, that's it. If not, I'll, I'll I'll send a copy of that. I do have that up on the computer uh, that I can send last year's last year's event material. Thank you, Ray. Uh huh. Just wanted to jump in really quick. It is listed on the website um, under the weather or not event. There's a little tab that says more resources, and there's a list of books and websites right. and textbooks as well. Okay, good, good. Then it is still there. Yeah. All right. Um, also, again, this the, the material that we talked about, again, what's going to be on it, uh, there should be actually, it's pretty straightforward. I think of last year's maybe, if not, again, I'll make sure that we get a copy of that uh, for the uh, site as well. Uh, as I said, I'll, I'll try to put together a, a PowerPoint just so we can go. So I can, again, give you an example of what a question will look like for the kids, uh, what a photograph or two uh, that we've used in the past so they understand what they're going to be looking at. Um, again, it will be projected up on uh, their, the, the, the projection screen like these kids are usually used to um, uh, in the classroom. So it's going to be very similar. Um, you know, generally we've had to kind of manipulate. We've usually had rooms where, uh, you know, we still had uh, uh, outside light sources. So again, trying to manipulate how much light uh, can we keep in there versus again, making it dark enough for the kids to be able to see. Unfortunately, I don't know what that room looks like until the day I get there, um, so it's hard to prepare um, for what that may be, but we'll uh, try to make it as um, uh, straightforward for the kids as possible and being able to visualize uh, the material. If there are some kids who are you know, visually impaired in some way, shape, or form in that, you know, please let me know again. Uh, let's give preference for those kids to be sitting closer uh, in the front, uh, of course, to be able to. Those kind of things will definitely uh, will um, you know be able to uh, to compensate for? Um, so, but as I said, it will be up for there. We, I won't come back. They can't go back. I'm not going to turn back on questions. So again, we're only going to have those photographs going on for that period of time. What is the website uh, for? I, I what the Macomb for the Macomb? Uh, what is it? Uh, is it Macomb Science Olympiad or so? It's, yeah. It is macombso.org, and then there's a bunch of different tabs for each event on the website. Macombso.org, okay. Yeah. So, and that's helpful, and usually they do keep things up. So again, uh, there won't, uh, 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 again, as I said earlier, uh, again, there's only so many questions. I probably have about a, uh, somewhere close to 400 questions uh, that I've created over these years. Of being able to use, but the reality is, I put together two seventy to seventy-five, you know, question tests every season. So that's one hundred and fifty. So there aren't going to be any uh, old tests being available. So you can, like I said, I will put out a question or so just so you guys understand, so the kids are comfortable with how the questions uh, are, are presented. Uh, but there aren't any old tests uh, <laughs> available. But again, it, it, it uh, you know puts them, you know kids at a uh, unfair advantage. So um, again, trying to rotate uh, about every three years for the type that we're going, because as a general, that's about as long as any kid's going to probably be in the, you know, in the system uh, of being able to see. So they didn't see, you know, uh, again, it comes new questions. There will be some repeats over the years with some question kids. Well, oh, I recognize this question, you know, and again, and some especially those straightforward ones that we want the kids to go. But I do mix them up just to make sure that it's just not uh, straight memory from previous years. I have a uh, question. Ray, what about workshops? Uh, as of right now, I'm not planning on any. Uh, I, 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 I don't know if there are any. I think in the past, 
Uh, there has been something from Macomb County, so I don't know if they've come forward uh, to the main body or not of being available. Uh, but I don't, I'm not planning on anything at this point in time. Um, the uh, one thing I do actually encourage to my uh, parents that actually can be kind of interesting, especially since we are actually doing uh, these severe storms this year, uh, I would go to the National Weather Site for Pontiac here and actually maybe actually do the uh, Storm Spotter uh, series for this year. Because again, they'll go over those kind of things, what a severe storm is, uh, look, you know, types of uh, presentations, photographs with clouds and that. It's a nice thing for the kids to know so they actually recognize weather uh, in their environment and how to be able to address it appropriately for themselves and their families. So those things are usually are done in late March, or, uh, late March, early April, um, and uh, they uh, they're all over the three county area. Um, Macomb generally has been at the um, main uh, MISD office on Garfield there, just south of Hall Road, uh, over the last couple of years. Now, again, whether or not they're running those things, but those can be those actually can be very helpful. I've done those a couple of times just for my own um, appreciation and, and they could be helpful. So uh, I, I haven't had anybody pop in, uh, Ms. Patel didn't pop in, so I'm assuming that they have not received anything from any of the local areas at this point in time that they're they're doing any kind of uh, workshop. Anything else? What did you say that we should do off of Hall Road? My computer oh, it, froze it, it, right it, into your... Yeah, if you go, it, it, it's uh, the National Weather Service every spring um, in, in areas are due. They actually do a, a storm spotters course uh, to be able to recognize severe weather. And uh, uh, that uh, for both uh, severe thunderstorms as well as tornadoes. That's about a two hour course uh, to be able to go through. Uh, again, just to training people of how to uh, to recognize uh, weather or so forth. Again, you can be a, a spotter. Any one of us, of course, can spot and call in. But again, uh, what what uh, we're recognizing. So it can actually be helpful in this regard for that portion of severe weather that affects here in, in Michigan. So that could was there, be was there a website we can go to look I, at? I, what I would go is I would do uh, uh, just uh, plug in National Weather Service and then go to the Pontiac uh, area. And then generally, as you scroll down uh, on the website, uh, they will they should have uh, areas for storm spotting uh, courses for the spring. So they're probably actually uh, doing those now. Now, how this is being affected by COVID and the number, if they're doing a number, oh, a limited number of people coming in or not, I, I, I'm not 100% sure, but those have been available in the past and actually very useful. All right, any other things? All right, uh, I think generally there, you can ask questions um, uh, on the uh, on the website uh, under the uh, uh, varying um, events. Uh, I, I will check that periodically. I think they also notify me if there are any questions to be able to answer. They will be, I, will, I won't answer directly, but I will answer them on the site. So again, everybody uh, you know, has that information available if anybody has any further questions um, uh, or clarification of rules or what we uh, do on exam day. All right, I guess if there's no other questions, I guess, uh, I guess that's over. Good luck with everything. Have fun with your, uh, have fun with your kids. Uh, enjoy learning a little bit more about weather and uh, looking forward to seeing people at the varying sites uh, over this uh, next few months. All right. Thank you for your time and volunteering. Thanks, yeah, my pleasure. Take care. Ms. Patel, anything else?